today I have a high powered dual motor, full suspension, beefy tire, and lights for days type of a scooter. This is called the X11 and it's from a company called Yumi. Now these guys specialize in high powered dual motor off-road scooters. This is one out of 10 models they uh, have. The X11 costs $1,999. Gonna break everything down for you, show you what it can do. So let's get started off with the speed test. It's time to see how fast this can go. We've got a lot of power to work with. There's two 2,500 watt brushless DC motors, one in each wheel. And that's powered by a 60 volt, 31.5 amp hour lithium battery that takes five to six hours for recharge and has dual charging ports. And this is the first scooter company that sent me two chargers, which is pretty cool. Now there's three speed modes. I'm gonna show you how fast uh, each speed mode is. And I'm gonna play around with the Eco Turbo single and dual as well. And in the P menu on P level eight, there's the power setting and you can change the power output from one to 100. So if you don't want your kids to go as fast as you go, you got that option. There's also a steering dampener, which I actually like. At a standstill, you don't have a large turning radius. It does stop you, which is kind of annoying if you're just trying to turn the scooter around. Like if you're on the sidewalk, you wanna go the other way, you got, almost gotta pick it up. But when I'm going 25, 30, even faster than that, I, I, I've never felt it, you know, I never felt it uh, stop me or hinder me from turning. So as you're driving, it's just fine. It's only hindrance when it stops and you're just trying to move it and rotate it around. So the scooter's supposed to get up to 50 miles per hour. Let's see if I can hit that. I've got two of the five battery bars missing. I'm on turbo and dual motors, speed mode one. Here we go. I just hit it, felt the max there. That's 22 for one. That's 34 for two. Woo. Uh, that's 43. And uh, the stop sign, as you can see, was fast approaching. And so I decided to cut it short. Uh, and I was feeling a little bit of, of the death wobble, just starting to hit about 43, 44. So, I, I mean, I felt like I had more power to give. I think I, I could eventually maybe got up to 50, but I wouldn't feel comfortable with going that fast. I want to show you the speed with dual motor and eco turned on. So I've got a gas. So in eco mode, even with dual motors, it tops out at 17, 18 miles per hour. One more test with single motor and then turbo turned on on speed mode three. Let's see how fast this can get going. It's a slow build, still accelerating. Kind of starting to top out about 20, uh, 30. It was still going, but I kind of felt it topping out about 29 miles per hour. So even with a single motor on speed mode three, you're still 30, maybe even 30 plus if I have a little bit more room. I've got about, uh, it says two battery bars, but probably one and a quarter. I think that second one is almost done. And I want to show you how fast it can go with low battery. <laughs> so speed mode three, flat stretch of road, here we go. The acceleration is definitely about a quarter slower than it was with the full battery. So that was a two block stretch there and I hit 40 miles per hour and I felt it topping off about 38, but I was still slowly climbing. So I, you know, it, I probably could have got low 40s if I had another block or two to go. So, and again, the acceleration uh, is, is about a quarter slower than it was with a full battery. I still spun the tires, just not nearly as much as when it was fully charged. It's time to see how long it takes the X11 to reach 20 miles per hour. This is the acceleration test. Now it is one of the heavier scooters out there at 110 pounds, but it does have a 330 pound carrying capacity. So it can carry a lot of weight. I do have three, I would say about two battery bars, two and a quarter. That third one tends to 
disappear off and on. So kind of on the lower half of the battery. Now in P level nine, you can change this from a kick to a zero start. I do have it set to a zero start for this test. And then on level 12, you can change from a slow to a fast acceleration. There's five levels. I'm first gonna show you how fast it takes off at zero, uh, at the zero level, which is the slow level. I'll come back to the same spot, run it again on five, which is the highest level and see if there's a difference there. And we got some burning rubber there. It is quick. We're all ready to 20. I'm gonna just keep on going just for fun. 30. Wow, this, this just wants to, it wants to get up and dance. We'll call it good there. So even on that, uh, on the slow start, it's actually pretty dang fast. The battery did drop another bar down to two bars left. This is on level five, the more speedy takeoff. Here we go. Right, there we go. Spun that front tire a little bit longer. And already to 31. So yeah, that is, I gotta be honest, that actually felt slower than the first, the first round. So maybe they got that backwards where zero is actually fast and five is slow because I really felt a stronger takeoff on zero. Anyway, regardless, it, it gets up and goes and that's all you need to know. You'll, you'll be beating the cars off the line taking this downtown. Let me run through the LCD screen and control pad on the handlebars, all the cockpit stuff. On the left side, there's a light switch. Below that is the horn. There's a compass with a USB port underneath there. There are two keys, so you have a key ignition here. Two keys displays the voltage. Then the throttle display is pretty easy. You have power mode, that just changes the speed mode there. Um, hold that down to access the advanced settings. You do have to put in a passcode to change all the settings, and that is 1233. And then P1 changes the brightness, P2 units, P4 you can change the auto off. P6 is the wheel diameter, and P16 is the odometer reset. All the other P settings I've talked about throughout the uh, testing. And that's pretty much it. Well, it's time to see how far this thing can go. It has a range rating of up to 60 miles. This is basically just to see how far it will go, cruising at around 20 miles per hour with very few stops. Forgot to mention that I do have it on dual motors and turbo turned on as well. The first battery bar gone, and I've gone 4.76 miles and haven't had any drop in power. Just uh, nice and easy at 20 miles per hour. Two battery bars missing, and I've gone 9.56 miles. Down to two battery bars, just lost the third one, and I've gone 18.76 miles and still averaging 20 to 21. So it has the same speed, I'm on speed mode one. So same speed, same power as with a full battery. Well guys, while I'm on the race test, I got my microphone plugged in. So I'll tell you a little bit about the machine. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie, WALL-E or Short Circuit, but this scooter reminds me of the robots in those movies. Number five alive. Now this does come with two fenders uh, that are metal, actually kind of a higher quality fender. They also give you a carrying case you can attach right below the handlebars. And you can pick this up in either black or gold. I just think the gold looks pretty awesome. A couple of design flaws that I'm not a fan of is the handlebars. It's nice if you wanna collapse it down even further, but they just don't stay tight. I have to tighten those about three to four times if I'm out riding for a couple hours. And then the front headlight, the left one anyways, is a little bit loose. That's the only thing that's making noise. As far as handling, uh, I really like it. It's very light and easy. Even on sharp turns going fast, there's no speed wobble. It can corner the best out of any scooter for the size. Stability is also fantastic. You can easily raise my hand, take my hand off the handlebars. It handles and feels like I would expect a scooter to feel for as much as this cost. 
Well, even though it is a heavier scooter, I can still pop up the front wheel. I mean, I'm just kind of bouncing right now. You got a lot of travel in that suspension. For trail riding like this, I mean, it's hard to beat the comfort level that this gives. Let me dive into the cockpit, starting off with the handlebars, which is a very good length for the size of the scooter. The grips are my favorites. Easy to swap those things out, so I'd probably upgrade those. There's no rider size rating for this. I do have the handlebars up to the highest level, and I'm 5'11", and it's actually very good height for me. My reach isn't strained at all. It's very comfortable and natural feeling. Now that stem also collapses towards the bottom. There's a safety pin you have to pull out and then a red lever you just push and that will collapse the stem. I'm moving down to the deck. There is plenty of room there. I can place my feet one in front of the other, side by side, still have room on each side. Underneath the deck, you got uh, two 11 inch air fill tires and they are beefy and wide. In the front, you got C-shaped front suspension. And then in the rear, there's two 125 millimeter spring. I mean, this just feels like bouncing on a little trampoline. I'm gonna give you guys an idea of the throttle sensitivity here. So I'm on dual motors, turbo, and on speed mode three. First off, it takes about uh, half an inch for the throttle to engage. And then cruising at 20 miles per hour, if I release it, instant cutoff. Very reactive, love that. Let me get back up to 20 here. So at 20, I'm gonna floor it. Woo! -hoo -hoo. It uh, takes off. That is very reactive and what you would expect for a scooter in this price range. Well, I, oh, now it says two again. After I stop, it takes about 15 seconds for that second battery bar to show up. So I'm gonna say I'm down to one bar and I've gone 37.06 miles with uh, almost a three hour ride time. Well, I'm a good portion through that last battery bar and I'm still hitting 22 miles per hour on the flats. So it's got uh, awesome power consistency throughout the whole life of the battery. Again, the acceleration is a little bit slower. I know there's some power, a power drop in there, but you know, so it takes longer to get to that 21, 22 mile per hour speed, but it's getting there. Okay, that wraps up the range test. I have, you know, the last battery bar wasn't blinking, it wasn't turning red. Uh, so I'm probably about halfway through, if, if even that, to that last bar. But I got uh, 41.38 miles, uh, which is awesome, with uh, 1,962 feet of elevation gain. So that's that's awesome. I don't think I've ever been on a scooter that has got that type of range. I've actually never done over 40 miles in one one ride. So I'm pretty tired. I don't know if you can hear that in my voice, but <laughs> I'm, I'm wore out. For this race test, I'm going to stay mostly on the roads. So I am going to uh, hit over 20 miles an hour. Just going to go with the flow of traffic, sometimes 25, sometimes 35, maybe 40. Overall, I'm gonna ride the scooter hard, uh, a little bit harder than the first range test. I'm gonna be on the third gear. I've got a full battery and start my tracking app. Here we go. I lost my first battery bar and I've gone 4.10 miles. I've lost two out of the three battery bars and I've gone 6.24 miles and I have had a lot of stop and go. So riding hard, fast starts, hard stops. Yeah, I'm going to keep on going and see what I get. Just lost another battery bar down to two and I've gone 11.58 miles. The scooter still shows two battery bars. When I'm riding, it's, it goes down to one. So I think I'm close to one. But over the last five minutes, I've felt a significant decrease in power. But I've gone 15.72 uh, miles. And, uh, and so I think I'm just gonna hang around close to my house and see if I can squeeze out another mile or two. I don't wanna go too far away because in my experience, when I can feel a, a decrease in power <laughs> all of a sudden, the scooter only has about anywhere from one to three miles left. Well, I'm calling it. Uh, I still have two battery bars left, but power is just, it's, it's fading. And so uh, if I, uh, in my experience, I bet it probably has around 20 to 30% battery left if that and i don't like to run it all the way out because i can damage the battery uh anyway got 18.9 miles which is actually really good for how hard and how fast i was riding this 
and elevation was 684 feet. Most of you, this is what you've been waiting for, the off-road range test. I have a full charge on the scooter. Oops, it's gonna start my tracking app here. I'm gonna see how this, uh, how comfortable this is to ride on some uh, gnarly terrain. So here we go. I want to show you how this can climb for some off-roading. It's around, it's over 20% grade at its steepest. The hardest part is just picking the line, making sure I don't damage the rotors. Still on. It's spinning on me. I'm trying to lean forward to give that front tire some grip. It's got the power. I've only stepped off two times. Actually pretty stable for how rocky. Okay, this part I'm gonna walk. Uh, I gotta say that's the easiest and smoothest, most enjoyable time I've had making my way up that hill. So yeah, bottom line, this just has tremendous climbing power. Now the first battery bar is gone. I've gone 3.79 miles. Lost my second bar and I've gone 5.05 miles. I've gone to two battery bars. I've gone 9.11 miles with an hour and a half ride time. Okay, that wraps up the off-road range test. Now I actually gave up before the scooter did. It does have uh, two bars on it. When I was going up hills, it would go down to one, but then when I hit the flats, it was back to two. So it probably has a bar and a quarter left. Uh, but anyway, I got 13.94 miles. That's how far I went with 907 feet elevation gain. So if I would have taken it to the end of the battery life, I bet I probably could have got another four or five miles. So I'm gonna say around 16, 17, maybe even 18 for off-road riding, riding it hard. Now this is rated to climb up to a 40% grade, and this is a 80% grade, two block hill, steepest in the area, speed mode three, full battery, engage. Oh, we are popping a wheelie and pilling out. Oh, this is, it's no match. 20, 21, still climbing 22, steepest part here, 23, 24, holy cow, 25. And uh, 26 coming up over the top. Oh, jeez. Oh, the steepest part of that hill, I hit 25 miles per hour. Well, guys, there's a section of hill here that I've never been able to make it up on a bike or a scooter. I have two battery bars left. Speed mode three, dual motors, turbo turned on. I actually want to see how this is going to do up this. Already uh, going well so far with skidding the tires. And this is where it, oh, this is... Oh, it's a breeze. What? I don't know if you could tell, but it was so steep that I was, you know, leaning back, obviously, as I'm going up the hill, and the front wheel was actually spinning. The brake levers are a little bit small, and they're formed to fit two of my fingers, kind of nice and snug in there. Actually, really nice feeling as well. And as soon as they're pressed, they do cut the motor off. In the P menu on number 11, you can change the braking power. And there's a ton of levels. There's actually 24 levels. So I'm gonna go down this hill that I just came up for the brake test, or for the hill test rather, on uh, with braking power level one. I'm gonna come back up, go down on braking power 24, so low and high. So let's uh, hit one first. Here we go. Woo, here we go. I'm gonna lightly squeeze them. Doesn't take a lot of pressure to engage the brakes. It's a little bit harder here. I'm just getting that back tire, but yeah, it comes to a stop in a quick hurry. Those are very smooth. There's no pulsating or jerky motion at all. And yeah, they engage very quick. Okay, in the P menu now, and just gonna switch that to level 24. Go down the same hill. Usually on the highest braking level, in my experience, 
it tends to be very jerky. So I'm kind of curious as to see if that's what I'm gonna get. So lightly applying the brakes. You know, honestly, I don't feel any difference. Feel a little bit of speed here and Yeah, I honestly don't feel any difference between one and 24. I was expecting to feel a lot of like, you know, very sensitive braking and that's just not the case. So I'm gonna leave it at 24. The X11 has an IP54 waterproof rating, a uh, six month warranty, and free shipping in the US. Well, there you go, guys. There you have it. There's the review. Hopefully, you uh, can uh, have a better understanding of what this scooter can do. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. Like I said, if you want a comfortable off road scooter that can go the distance, this is a good option. And then for paved riding, I mean, it just goes and goes and goes. If you want to pick it up, I've got the link in the description. Also, be sure to check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability, making it easy to help you find the right machine. Hit that like button before you go, and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board, and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.